Japan, a land of timeless traditions and modern marvels, is a treasure trove of unique experiences and sights that can't be found anywhere else on Earth. Join me. I'm going to embark on a journey to the land of the rising sun. We're going to explore 15 things that are exclusive to Japan. From enchanting festivals to innovative gadgets, these distinct elements of Japanese culture and creativity are sure to leave you captivated and curious about this extraordinary country. Let's begin with number 15. Weird Vending Machines Now, vending machines can be found in just about any country in the world, but in most places, the options they provide are a bit limited, and they're to drinks or snacks. In Japan, though, things have been taken to a whole different level in a way that visitors often can't believe. It's thought that there are as many as 5 million of them across the country, from city street corners to train stations and even inside restaurants. But it's not so much their prevalence that's unusual, as much as the products that are on offer in them. The most common ones, like elsewhere, are for drinks, but in Japan there are vending machines that dispense bottles of Coca-Cola that instantly turn into slushies, ones that sell warm sake, milk, and virtually many other drink you could possibly want. And then there are the machines that sell clothing, from shirts to underwear, and in every station there's almost certainly one that sells surgical masks. All of these are relatively low price, but there are some big ticket items that can be bought directly from a vending machine too. Some sell entire meals, expensive bouquets of flowers, or in some cases you can even buy a car from one. Possibly the most surprising of all though are the ones that you can find in certain pet shops, where animals are kept in specially designed vending machines, and they can be used to purchase a new rabbit or even a dog for your family. Number 14. Anime Cafes and Restaurants As with anywhere, Japan's got plenty of restaurants and eateries to choose from, but in a culture that's the home of anime, there are lots that theme themselves after a beloved story, which gives a unique way to immerse yourself within the country's vibrant pop culture scene. From the moment you step inside, you're transported into the colorful and fantastical worlds of your favorite anime series. Walls adorned with posters and life-size cutouts of popular characters, themed furniture, and even staff and cosplay outfits create an environment that feels like stepping right into an anime episode or a video game. From Pokemon and Mario to One Piece and Hello Kitty. The menus at these places feature dishes inspired by other popular anime and manga series, so if you've ever wanted to tuck into a Pikachu dumpling, then these are the places for you. The best thing, though, is that they're not just about the visuals, and the food is actually pretty good, too. As well as eating at a place that's coming from your favorite anime, you'll also be surrounded by fellow fans, which gives a great opportunity to dress up, talk about your favorite anime, and take part in themed events and activities that are put on by the restaurants. In recent years, virtual reality tech has become more commonplace, too, giving an even more immersive experience. And once you're finished, there is usually, of course, a merchandise store with some officially licensed products you'll be hard-pressed to find anywhere else. Number 13. Public Footpaths when you're walking around all day, it can take a toll on your feet, but amazingly Japan has a tradition that not only helps with this, but gives everyone a chance to have a moment of calm. Known as Ashiyu, these are public footpaths, and they're found in a variety of settings across the country, including hot spring resorts, city parks, temples, and even along hiking trails. They're usually small, shallow pools that are filled with geothermally heated water that's from local hot springs, with its mineral content believed to have therapeutic properties. This means the experience is not only enjoyable, but potentially good for your overall health as well. Ashiyu are surprisingly accessible. They can be found all over and are usually free to use. Visitors can sit on low stools or benches placed around the footpath and soak their feet while taking in the serene surroundings. They also act as gathering places, which helps foster a community spirit. And tourists are normally more than welcome, and it's a great chance to connect with locals, learn about the culture, and exchange travel tips. Most Ashiyu are thoughtfully designed to blend in with their natural surroundings and often have stunning views of the landscapes, such as mountains and rivers, or even could be within a secluded courtyard among cherry blossom trees. Wherever they are, they provide a tranquil escape from the hustle and bustle of daily life. And with such a benefit to mental health too, it's a real shame that places like these aren't available around the rest of the world. Number 12. Blue-ish Traffic Lights if you've ever driven in Japan or seen images of the roads, you may have noticed something quite unusual about the traffic lights. 
There's an international standard when it comes to such important instructional devices on the road, which, while they may be designed and present things differently, use the principle of the color red indicating that you should stop, green meaning to go, and amber or yellow showing that you should be particularly cautious and the main color is about to change. In Japan, though, the green lights aren't always green as you'd normally expect, and you'll eventually come across one of the country's famous blue traffic lights. It leaves almost every tourist wondering what's happening now, or whether someone has managed to put the wrong bulb in the light. But there's actually a historically rooted reason why this is the case. For a long time, the Japanese language only had words for four colors, black, white, red, and blue. And even though that now has changed, the words for blue and green are often interchangeable, so much so that even things like green bamboo are called eodake, which means blue bamboo. And you'll probably find so-called blue apples in markets that are decidedly green. Originally, all of Japan's traffic lights were green, but there were objections in the 1970s when international law began to require traffic signals to be green, because in official documents they were actually being referred to as blue. The government therefore found a compromise in that the shade of green chosen for use in traffic lights was as close to blue as possible, so it still could be called blue but is at the same time green enough to satisfy international regulations. Number 11. Plastic Display Food Whenever you go to a restaurant, you find yourself scouring the menu for the dish that you'd like the most. But quite often you won't know how it'll look until it's arrived at your table, even if the menu has images on it. Often, because so many tourists become confused about what's on offer, there's a clever tradition in Japan that overcomes that problem, and you'll notice that lots of restaurants have food on display in their windows. Of course, it's not feasible or cost-effective for the chefs to produce fresh dishes each day to update the display, so all of the example ones that you see are made of plastic. Known as sampuru or sample food, these incredibly detailed and realistic replicas of dishes are typically made from plastic or resin and are crafted by skilled artisans. These sculptors use various techniques to achieve the lifelike appearance of the food, including hand painting, molding, and airbrushing. The level of detail in sampuru is astonishing, with everything from the texture of the noodles to the glistening of sauces being faithfully recreated. The end result is so convincing that it can be challenging to distinguish sampuru from the real thing. Rather than being limited to traditional Japanese cuisine, this is done with everything, including pizza and hamburgers, and is a far better reflection of what you can expect than the staged photographs you're probably more accustomed to. What once began to simplify choices has also now become an art form in its own right, and there are some shops that specialize exclusively in crafting these replicas, with collectors valuing particularly well-made pieces as decorative items for their homes. Number 10. Arcades Arcades, they're popular entertainment centers in plenty of countries, but as the home of video games, the ones in Japan are unlike anything else you'll find. Often referred to as game centers or game arcades, they're deeply embedded within the country's vibrant gaming culture. The first ones opened more than a century ago, and companies like Nintendo were formed to produce mechanical slot machines, which are called pachinko machines. While there are parlors dedicated to just these types of games alone that are known for the distinctive sounds that they make, the advent of new technologies has led to the development of huge multi-story complexes that offer a wide variety of games, from classic pinball and claw machines to cutting-edge rhythm games and virtual reality. While arcades may have declined in popularity in many parts of the world, they continue to be a thriving industry in Japan. The likely reason for the enduring popularity is that there's so much on offer. Gamers can find everything from traditional fighting games like Street Fighter to elaborate rhythm games like Dance Dance Revolution. Some of the most popular titles are exclusive to arcades, or at least released in arcades long time before they're available on home consoles, and this further encourages players to visit regularly. Music rhythm games like Taiko no Tatsujin and Beat Mania 2DX have a dedicated fan base, featuring soundtracks that add to the atmosphere of the arcade as a whole, and they feature unique gameplay mechanics that challenge players. UFO catchers or claw machines are extremely popular too, with the ability to instantly win almost anything from them. Many arcades host regular tournaments and events where players can test their skills against the best in the region, and this helps them transcend to a place in society that's far beyond simply playing the latest game. Being surrounded by others who share that same passion, arcades are communal hubs, and some of the most important and popular social spaces in Japanese life. Number 9. Cherry Blossom Festivals 
Japanese cherry blossom festivals, known as Sakura Matsuri, are some of the most popular events in Japan that take place each year to celebrate the beauty of cherry blossoms. The Sakura season typically occurs in late March to early April, although the timing varies slightly depending on the region and the weather. And when it does happen, the blossoms blanket Japan in incredibly delicate shades of pink and white, which transform the streets and countryside in a stunning way. Festivals are held across the country, which are focused around the centuries-old tradition of hanami, which literally translates to mean flower viewing. People gather in parks, gardens, and along riverbanks, spreading out picnic blankets under the cherry blossom trees, and will then share food, drinks, and laughter while enjoying the nature around them. Traditional Japanese music and dance performances often accompany hanami gatherings, and you'll see musicians playing instruments like the shemisen, koto, and taiko drums, while dancers perform around them. At night, any parks and temples with cherry blossom trees are beautifully lit up, which adds further depth to those festivities, with the contrast of the illuminated blossoms against the night sky being nothing short of mesmerizing. In addition to hanami and illuminations, cherry blossom festivals feature a range of activities and cultural events. Parades, tea ceremonies, and art exhibitions are put on, with some regions hosting sumo wrestling matches under the cherry blossom trees, combining tradition with popular sports. If you're ever looking for the perfect time to visit Japan, then the cherry blossom season is surely it. And if you get the chance, the festivals at Ueno Park in Tokyo and Maruyama Park in Kyoto are particularly known for their communal and welcoming atmosphere, with plenty for everyone to do as the blossoms fall around them. Number 8. Rice Paddy Illustrations if you're traveling through the Japanese countryside at the right time of year, you may see huge art pieces in some of the fields. And these are the result of a Japanese tradition that's become more and more common in the past few decades. Rice paddy illustrations, also known as tambo art, are created by planting different varieties of rice with varying colors to form large-scale images and designs in rice fields. It's an art form that's not only visually striking, but also reflects Japan's deep connection to agriculture and its creative spirit. The tradition of tembo originated in the rural town of Inakadate in Amori Prefecture in the early 1990s. Local farmers there began to experiment with planting different types of rice to create basic designs, and over the years, their expertise evolved, and it now encompasses intricate, colorful, and highly detailed illustrations that cover large expanses of land. These creations range from depictions of famous paintings and landscapes to popular anime characters and cultural symbols. Creating tembo art is a complex and collaborative process. It often involves careful planning, with designs often created on computer software to ensure precision. Once the design is finalized, farmers plant different types of rice that have varying colors to match the desired image, with the rice varieties including traditional strains along with the modern colorful hybrids. As the rice grows, the image gradually takes shape, and you can literally, over time, watch a work of art grow from the ground. Because of its size, it's usually best viewed from elevated platforms or observation decks, and during the summer months, tourists and locals flock to these vantage points to see the latest designs. As well as ultimately being able to harvest the rice to sell, the landowners have developed a new type of visitor attraction that not only has helped to improve local economies, but has also boosted the sense of community pride and collaboration among farmers, artists, and residents. Number 7. Toilets Japan is famous for being one of the technologically forward-thinking countries of the world, and has long been associated with where the latest gadgets and exciting tech products originate from. It is quite common for inventors to apply technological solutions to everything they can, and it's this attitude that's led to the rise of some of the most unusual toilets in the world. Now, normally, wherever you are, you'd expect toilets to be fairly basic, consisting of at least a seat and a flush mechanism to dispose of your deposits. It's hard to think how this could be improved upon by technology, but they've certainly found a way in Japan. It's not too unusual, whether in public facilities, in a hotel, or when visiting someone's home, to find a control panel on or nearby to the toilet, and this is the first indication that things will be different. The features that are seen as basic are enhancements like the addition of a water nozzle within the bowl that acts as a bidet, and another very common function is the use of a heating element within the seat to ensure your bottom is warm and comfortable. Advanced toilets may include options to determine the exact temperature that your seat is heated to, automatic lids with proximity sensors, automatic deodorizers, and even ones that automatically play music to help you relax. 
With an increasingly elderly population, models with armrests and riser recliner functions to help you sit down and stand up again are becoming more common. And most mid-range and top-range ones will have a self-cleaning function too. If that's not enough to convince you that your own toilet is far behind the times, the emerging toilet technology is even cleverer. Prototypes have already been built that incorporate medical sensors to help diagnose issues, as well as ones with built-in Wi-Fi and ones that can be voice-operated too. I want one. Number 6. Robot Restaurant The Robot Restaurant is truly a one-of-a-kind dining and entertainment experience that's located in Tokyo's Kabuchiko District, which is an area that's known for its vibrant nightlife and entertainment. This one, though, is not your typical restaurant, and is instead a neo-futuristic extravaganza that combines a dining experience with a high-energy multimedia performance featuring robots, dancers, and various visual effects. Think medieval times, but done the Japanese way. The Robot Restaurant first opened in 2012, and it quickly gained international fame for its over-the-top performances. Visitors are welcomed into a neon-lit sci-fi lounge area before being led to their seats in a theater filled with colorful decorations and LED screens. The anticipation builds as you take in the quirky decor and electric atmosphere. Choosing from the limited menu, which includes Japanese bento boxes and snacks, you then sit back and wait for the show, which typically features multiple acts of giant robots, performers in extravagant costumes, and elaborate sets. The robots, controlled by skilled technicians, perform dances and engage in mock battles, while being accompanied by a pulsating soundtrack and dazzling lights. Unsurprisingly, the robot restaurant has become a must-visit attraction for tourists looking to immerse themselves in Tokyo's quirky and unconventional side. It's also become a hit among locals seeking a fun night out with their friends. Currently, Japan is the only place you're able to experience anything like this, but its success hasn't gone unnoticed. Several companies are looking at the possibilities of opening various versions elsewhere around the world. But even if that does happen, the one in Kabuchiko will always be the original and the best. Number 5. Themed Trains Ever since the 1980s, Japan has been famous around the world for its public transport network, which included the first high-speed railways of any country. Since then, they've paved the way for the development of new train technology that travel even faster and more reliable than ever before. But while this may be impressive, it's now something that's becoming more common elsewhere, particularly in China and some parts of Europe. What remains extremely unusual about Japan's train network, though, are the actual trains that operate on the lines. While most are like you'd expect, you might find yourself traveling on one of the famous themed trains, and they take their themes to the next level. You may, on the high-speed network, find yourself in the Genpi Shinkansen, for example, which is a bullet train that's been converted into a moving art installation by JR East. With an exterior covered in images of fireworks, it's only when you step inside that you see how unexpected it is. There are video walls with animations and installations by famous artists, an interactive playroom for children, and a number of lounge areas that are adorned with art. If that's not your style, then perhaps the Pokemon train between the two northern cities of Ichinoseki and Kesanuma is more your thing, or ones based on virtually every popular anime franchise. Perhaps instead, if you're tired after a long day or have many hours of travel ahead of you, then the Toreyu Subasa train between Fukushima and Yamagata offers the ultimate relaxation experience. On board, there are foot baths that you can use to soak and rest your feet, and you'll also find a traditional bar on board that serves homemade Yamagata sake and wine. This, of course, just scratches the surface of the types of trains that operate in Japan, and depending on the routes you're taking, there will always be an unusual and unexpected option to take, which makes traveling far more fun than it normally is. Eat your heart out, Sheldon Cooper. Number 4. Jigokudani Monkey Park Jigokudani Monkey Park, which is in the Japanese Alps, near to the town of Yamano Uchi in Nagano Prefecture, is a stunning wildlife sanctuary, and it's a natural wonder that's captured the hearts of visitors from around the world. It is most famous for its unique residents, a troop of Japanese macaques, which are more commonly known as snow monkeys, who go there for relaxing soaks in natural hot springs during the cold winter months. The name Jigokudani translates to Hell Valley, which might sound ominous, but it's an apt name for the volcanic landscape that surrounds the park. The valley gets its name from the steep cliffs, steam vents, and sulfurous flames that create an almost alien-looking environment. But it's this geothermal activity that makes the hot springs in the area so appealing to the snow monkeys, as they provide them with much-needed warmth during the freezing winters. 
The snow monkeys of this park have become iconic symbols of resilience and adaptation and are believed to have begun to use the hot springs in this way just a few decades ago. They weren't encouraged to do so by humans and developed this tradition all by themselves, but it has, of course, become a true sight to behold and attracts thousands of people to the region. The park is open year-round, but the best time to visit is during the winter months between December and March, when temperatures have dropped to a level where the monkeys are most active in the hot springs. To ensure the safety and well-being of both the monkeys and the visitors, there are strict rules once you're inside the park, with feeding and approaching the monkeys being strictly prohibited, as is entering the hot spring pools that are reserved just for the monkeys. Visitors can watch the monkeys from designated viewing areas, and if you want a warm soak yourself, there are pools for humans to use as well. Number 3. Capsule Hotels Capsule hotels, or Kapuseru Hoteru, as they're known in Japanese, may be becoming more commonly seen elsewhere. But it originated in Japan and are far more prevalent and more varied there. These compact rooms offer a unique experience that's particularly appealing to budget-conscious travelers and solo adventurers, and have been crucial to the country's development as one of the leading tourist destinations in the world. The concept of these capsule hotels can be traced back to the late 1970s as a solution to provide affordable and convenient overnight stays for businessmen who found themselves stranded in the city after a late night of work or missed a train. Space is extremely limited, and the small rooms enable the hotels to accommodate far more people than would otherwise be possible. The capsules themselves are small, box-like sleeping compartments that are stacked side by side and on top of each other, like in a grid fashion. While the dimensions may vary slightly from one hotel to another, they're usually just large enough to accommodate a single person lying down comfortably. They are equipped with modern conveniences, though, including a bed, a small TV or radio, and a control panel for adjusting the lighting and temperature, so provide everything you need for a comfortable night's sleep. While the individual capsules may seem compact, capsule hotels often provide further communal areas for relaxation and socializing. Some capsule hotels also have introduced female-only and age-restricted floors or sections to cater to a wider clientele. They are simple, functional, and efficient, and offer a no-frills approach to accommodation. But staying in one is not just about saving money, it's also a cultural experience. Many travelers are drawn to them to immerse themselves in a quintessentially Japanese way of life that combines the efficient use of space, the attention to detail, and the emphasis on cleanliness and order. As such, capsule hotels can now be found throughout Japan, with particularly high concentrations in major cities like Tokyo, Osaka, and Kyoto. Prices vary depending on the location and the quality of the facility and the type of capsule, with choices ranging from basic capsules to ultra-luxurious ones. They are certainly a truly unique and memorable way to stay in Japan, and it's worth spending at least one night in one if you're traveling through the country just to experience it for yourself. Number 2. Disney Sea most countries around the world have amusement parks, but there's no doubt that of all the companies that operate them, Disney is the most famous. In all, Disney has about 12 parks, four in Florida, two in California, two in Japan, one in France, one in Hong Kong, and one in Shanghai, China. But the ones in Japan are entirely different, especially Disney Sea. As part of the Tokyo Disney Resort, it's distinctive from the traditional Disney theme parks with its nautical theme, and the fact that while licensing Disney properties and characters, it's actually run by a different company. First opening its doors in 2001, Tokyo Disney Sea is an ambitious creation that has more than paid off. It's divided into seven themed ports of call, each offering its own unique vibe, attractions, and dining experiences. There is, for example, the Mediterranean Harbor, which serves as the park's picturesque entrance and captures the charm of Mediterranean coastal villages. The Grand Hotel Miracosta, an integral part of the park, is a towering attraction there in itself, and visitors can enjoy gondola rides along the harbor. The American Waterfront is a nostalgic reimagining of early 20th century New York, with highlights such as the SS Columbia, which is a full-scale ship with a restaurant, and the Tower of Terror, a thrilling attraction with a unique storyline set in a fictional luxury hotel. Next is Port Discovery, which features theming dedicated to futuristic exploration and Jules Verne's novels. It features Aquatopia, a ride with unpredictable water movement, and a Storm Rider simulator. 
Lost River Delta captures the spirit of Central and South American jungles with attractions including the Indiana Jones Adventure, Temple of the Crystal Skull, and the Raging Spirits Roller Coaster. And the Arabian Coast creates the charm of the Middle East with the Palace of Agrabah from Disney's Aladdin as its centerpiece. Attractions here include Sinbad's Storybook Voyage and the Caravan Carousel. The final two areas are the Mermaid Lagoon, which immerses visitors in an underwater world inspired by Disney's The Little Mermaid, and Mysterious Island, which also draws from Jules Verne's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. And it features Mount Prometheus, where you'll find the thrilling Journey to the Center of the Earth ride and the 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea submarine voyage. It's often voted as one of the best theme parks in the world. Tokyo Disney Sea gives you the chance to immerse yourself in Disney stories that barely feature at any of the other parks, and as a result, it's arguably the most unique of all of them. Number 1. Yuru Kiara Yuru Kiara, which are also called Yuru characters or local mascots, are one of the more unusual but incredible traditions in Japan. These adorable and often quirky mascots represent different regions, cities, towns, and organizations across the country. And while they may appear whimsical and lighthearted, they play a significant role in promoting local pride, tourism, and community engagement. The term Yuru Kiara is a combination of two words, Yuru, which means gentle or friendly, and Kiara, which is a shortened form of the word for character. The Yuru Kiara are designed to be approachable and relatable, with soft, cuddly appearances and friendly, non-threatening expressions, and they are meant to be endearing and instantly recognizable, making them ideal symbols for their respective regions or organizations. The popularity of these mascots gained momentum in the early 21st century, and today there are thousands of them across Japan, each with its own unique personality and backstory. Some Yuru Kiara are based on local wildlife, folklore, or historical figures, while others draw inspiration from regional specialties or cultural traditions. With so many of them, one of the best parts of the culture is the annual Yuru Kiara Grand Prix, which is a nationwide competition that allows them all to compete for popularity and recognition. The Grand Prix includes various categories such as regional, corporate, and unofficial mascots, and is a crazy, lighthearted, and spirited event that's followed by fans from all over Japan and beyond. Since their introduction, Yuru Kiara have been proven to have a significant economic impact and act as a harmless way to bring more attention to their respective towns or organizations. They do help boost tourism by attracting visitors, with travelers often seeking out the mascots for photo ops. Also, Yuru Kiara merchandise is a huge industry, with plush toys, clothing, and souvenirs generating revenue that can be reinvested into the community. It is a fun part of Japanese life that you won't see to anywhere near the same degree anywhere else, and that surely is a shame, because couldn't we all do with having a Yuru Kiara in our own neighborhood? I know my neighborhood needs one. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you to our channel members.